instant Laura for stable diffusion? Faces, styles, objects, poses, whatever you like, straight away, no training required. Unpossible, I hear you say. Well, hello and welcome to more nerdy rodent geekery. Yes, thanks to this comfy UI workflow from Aloe Vera, Allo, I can show you exactly how. It's so easy to use, with the most difficult thing being picking the images for your instant Laura. And yes, you can use this with ControlNet or even slap in a bit of QR code monster too, should you like, thanks to the bonus workflows that you can grab for free from the Very Comfy Nerd webpage. But more on those in a moment. Of course, this isn't an actual Laura, but you can use it in exactly the same way, just without all the effort of actually making one. While this video doesn't cover installing Comfy UI, I have already done one on exactly that. So check out that video first if you're looking for help on installation. Links for all of these things are, as usual, down in the video description. Okay, so how does all this work? What can you do with it? How far can you push it? And what does it take to actually get it set up in the first place? Starting with the setup, obviously you'll need Comfy UI running and whatever Stable Diffusion 1.5 checkpoint you fancy. If you've used Stable Diffusion before, likely you will already have plenty of those. If not, there are loads of options available on Civit AI and Hugging Face. I happen to be using this one here, Analog Madness from Civit AI, so should you wish to copy all these things exactly, that is the model I'm using. Now, as the exact requirements for these workflows will likely vary over time, my suggestion is to use Comfy UI Manager to install whatever nodes are missing for whichever workflow you load. Seeing red, well, just click Install Nodes. We can close that, open up Comfy UI Manager, and then just install missing custom nodes. Very, very easy. Absolutely love it, do it all the time. Comfy UI Manager can also help you keep updated. They've got an update all button there. Also very handy. Two models you may not already have are the ones for the IP adapter. Just like they indicate on this Civit AI page, put the IP adapter plus underscore SD15 bin into the custom nodes IP adapter models directory and the model.safe tensors into models clip vision. So here you can see it in my directory structure. We've got the IP adapter models, and that's the IP adapter plus bin. And all the way down here in models clip vision, there is the IP adapter vision. You can see here that I renamed mine because generic name confuse tiny brain, but that's it. No magical incantations or feats of bodily strength required, just super simple downloading, excellent. As mentioned, all the workflows I'm showing here are available from a very comfy nerd, though they are based on that aloe vera workflow. They're mostly for Stable Diffusion 1.5 at the moment, but there is that experimental SDXL version too. Okay, so I'm giving you three different versions available for download. We've got the basic Instant LoRa, just like that aloe vera Civit AI page, but I've also got one for Instant LoRa with control net and also with two control nets. So you've got the normal control net, so to speak, and the QR code monster for doing spirals and hidden text and all sorts of things like that as well. They're all really basic examples. So if you have used Comfy UI before, it should be very easy to see exactly how everything works and therefore to integrate it into any other workflows you may use. Right, let's start with this basic Instant LoRa. You've got the usual purple boxes over here to select the models you like to use for your creation. The Clip Vision model and the IP Adapter models are the ones you know you just downloaded now, so those should always stay the same, but feel free to use any Stable Diffusion 1.5 checkpoint or VAE you like. Next up, we've got the image width and height 
along with where to load your LoRa data set from. What's a data set? Who knows? Well, it's just a simple directory with whatever images you fancy. So here are a selection of images. I've got a directory there, Pixabay Woman, because it's some images I downloaded from Pixabay. There's eight items in total there, and uh, they're all slightly different, but it is of the same person. There we go. So we've got lots of different images in there, and we're gonna use that as our Laura. Now you don't really want to put too many images in there. Anything from one to 20 is absolutely fine. Also, if you want to put a prompt in, then you can, but let's just see what it generates by itself without any prompt to start with. And there you go, almost something like her. Not bad for zero training and very little effort. All right, let's see what happens if we generate a whole bunch more images. So we've got a new one there. I think perhaps we're almost starting to see what's going on here. There's a, a little bit of a trend. So they are fairly consistent. It's got the same sort of face, but the rest of the contents are also fairly similar. What you're getting here is like a fairly consistent mashup of every image that you provide. So that's very useful, especially if you want consistency on each image generation, or you know, say perhaps you always want a window in there. So you can just drop in an image of a window. We're getting leaves here because there was a leaf image. There you go, for example, we've got that leaf image. So holding the leaf, it's, it's picking out sort of all the different aspects from the various images and then creating a new one for you. Excellent, all right. So we can have quite a lot of fun just by creating mashups, which I think is perhaps what this was sort of originally designed for. Put lots of different images in there, you know, a person and a style and all sorts of things, and that's what you'll get out. But wait, there's ever so much more. Given this is an instant Laura, we can also prompt our way into doing loads of different things. And we've got a couple of extra boxes for that here we've got the prompt strength and the LoRa strength as well but bear in mind this is a very strong LoRa let me give you an example so we've got a photo of a hipster man in there as the prompt and if we queue that up and do a little generation what we can see is it's definitely not a hipster man at all that's because this LoRa strength is very very strong indeed if we drop that down, however, to something like 0.5 and then regenerate, what we will get instead is something that looks a lot more like a hipster man, but still with those elements of our instant Laura as well. So he's got some very lovely lipstick on there and there's the leaves and all those other things we were seeing with the images before. Typically the sweet spot is between 0.4 and 0.65 on that LoRa strength for a good mix, though do experiment away for other interesting blends. To change even more, you can lower the LoRa weight even further so that your prompt is more powerful. Here we've got the LoRa strength down to 0.4 to make an anime style cartoon woman illustration and there she is we can keep generating those and we will get fairly consistent characters it looks to be the same person each time but in an anime style and we've done this without any training let's pick another style here as well so this time i am going for watercolor and once again you get a fairly consistent woman from your lauras whatever it is that you're putting in but this time in an entirely different style so i think that's really fantastic for absolutely no training whatsoever just putting some images into a directory doing a little bit of prompting and some balancing of weights very nice indeed and of course if you want to change your instant laura just change which directory you're using so here i've got fruity mcnut face which is some images i generated using dali all right let's pop him in instead and we'll copy that there pop that into that directory there we go. Now I've got a new Laura. That's pretty instant, isn't it? And if we generate again using exactly the same settings other than the Laura, we'll get Fruity McNutt Face as a watercolor painting. I think that's rather cool. Look at that. It's nice. Okay, so what if I wanted to make a really nerdy rodent, but in that sort of style? Well, it's okay, but as you can see, each time I'm generating here, even with a fairly low LoRa strength, I'm getting a, a 
consistent output with this roundness and I've got a you know, I've got a nerdy rodent, but it's it's always the same sort of pose and stuff. How am I going to change this? If only there was a way to have just that little bit more control. Oh, just add control net. Oh, all right, okay, why not? So here we've got two images this time. We've got the IP adapter for your instant LoRa. I'm just using one image this time because yes, it works fine even with a single image. I've left the load images from directory box over there if you do want to use that, but I found it more convenient just to drop a new image in there each time. The prompting isn't really changing in this example. I'm just putting, you know, stunningly iconic masterpiece in there, not particularly changing the style or subject in any meaningful way. And what we've got here is we've got this face. Okay, so we've got a, a sort of elf woman and a weightlifter. And if we generate this, what do we get? Well, we get that sort of elfish faced woman lifting weights. Brilliant, all right. And if we drop a different picture in there instead, so we've got a face there with rather wild and crazy red hair going everywhere. Well, that gives us just exactly that. So it's got both the style and the subject there. So you get a very similar face and the same sort of thing going on in the image that you get generated. Excellent, all right, let's do a more cartoony one there. So slightly stern side eye going on. Does this come out as an illustration? Yes, it does, there we go. So that's her doing those weight lifting bits, excellent. But of course, you know, if it hasn't got a face in there, it's just going to copy the style. So if I put a black and white image in there, what do we get out? Well, you've probably guessed it already, yes we get a black and white image. Or how about if I put a painting of a person in there? What do we get? Are we going to get both his face and the painting style? Well, yes, we are. There he is. <laughs> that looks absolutely crazy. Okay, so yes, there he is lifting weights. All right, how about if we drop a statue? in there. Are we going to get a statue as the output lifting weights? I think you've already got the hang of this. Yes, we are. There he is, a statue lifting weights. And of course, once again, if you put something without a face in there, it's not going to transfer the face, but it is going to transfer the style of the image. So we get that rather cool Van Gogh style output. All right, that's, you know, that's fantastic. But what what if you wanted it to be a beaver and you don't have a picture of a beaver? It's okay, because we can use prompts, remember? So we've got a furry beaver there lifting weights. And this time when I queue that prompt up and generate, what we get is a rather fantastic beaver lifting those weights instead. How cool is that? But talking of weights, let's throw this image into the control net adapter there. So we've got a weird sort of creature and we've got a face in the IP adapter. If I put the control net strength up to one and I've got this LoRa strength of about 0.65, then, oh, oh dear. Oh dear, we really have entered the valley of the uncanny with the horse-faced person. Or is it a person-faced horse? I don't know, but basically you can do all sorts of things with this just by adjusting those different weights and having some really interesting pictures going on down in that load image area. All perfectly normal, almost as normal, in fact, as this next workflow where I've thrown in the QR code monster control net as well because everything is better with more control nets. This workflow takes three images, the same two as before, with the third one being the image for the QR code monster. I'm sure you remember from my last video, ev everyone does watch all of my videos, don't they? Don't they? Anyway, as you can see here, now all you have to do, put the images in there, click your Q prompt, and at the click of a button, you get a magical image that copies the style, the subject, the pose, and adds your hidden message in there as well. If you can't see the hidden message, let's make this really, really big. There we go, we can zoom in on that. It, it says control net on it. You might have to squit, no. But basically, there you go. So another control net on top of the other control net. Put your words in here, adjust the strength. So if you want that more hidden, for example, you could drop that down to 0.9. And if you wanted a completely different person, there, we can put that in 
And if you wanted a completely different pose, you could put that in too. Mix them all together, adjust whatever weights you want, use whichever workflow and create some really strange things. Though, if you need an imagination boost, what you could do is check out this next Nerdy Rodent video.